Sports Talk. I'm Chris, and this is going to be another NFL edition. And in this NFL edition, we are talking quarterbacks, and when are we not talking about quarterbacks? It came out like a week ago that Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll had a little bit of a disagreement about how the Seattle Seahawks offense was going to be run, his input in set offense. And then after the meeting, which he apparently stormed out of, he said that he wasn't looking for a trade, but he would be willing to accept a trade for one of four teams. And the four teams are as follows. The Las Vegas Raiders, the Dallas Cowboys, the Chicago Bears, and the New Orleans Saints. With certain uncertainties for some of those teams, such as the Dallas Cowboys, with are they going to franchise tag Dak? Can they afford to get Russell Wilson, who's under contract and probably would be cheaper to sign than Dak Prescott, who's not coming off of a season-ending injury. Yes, he's much older, but it would make sense. And ultimately, with the money that they're paying him, they could afford to build up around him because now Russell Wilson, although he is one of the higher-paid quarterbacks in the NFL, his deal is going to slowly start to trickle down when guys like Dak Prescott start to get paid. It would make sense for him going to Dallas, going to New Orleans. We don't know what's going to happen with Drew Brees, is he going to retire? Is he not going to retire? Taysom Hill clearly is not the answer there. I honestly believe that they're going to turn it over to Jameis Winston, but if they have an opportunity to get someone like Russell Wilson, and if they can get him cheap enough, it might be a possibility that they'd be considering. However, Drew Brees is making about 8 or $9 million a year less than what Russell Wilson makes. So there is that to factor in, because now there goes someone at the skill position that isn't going to be able to get paid because now Russell Wilson's making more money. Be it Taysom Hill, be it Alvin Kamara, be it Michael Thomas, someone's going to ultimately end up getting shafted out of this deal and they're going to go elsewhere. The Chicago Bears. Mitch Trubisky clearly is not the answer. Neither is Nick Foles. They did make the playoffs with two backup quarterbacks, essentially. So you can only imagine what someone like Russell Wilson would do. However, this is the same scenario that we find ourselves in. The Bears don't have very many offensive weapons. They would probably have to get rid of both Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky to equal close to what Russell Wilson makes. So there would be two people ultimately getting the axe. I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing, but Chicago hasn't had luck with quarterbacks. I know Russell Wilson has a very good arm. He is very accurate. I don't know how well he'll do in Chicago, and if he has some bad games, that fan base will absolutely eat him alive. And lastly, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Eric Carr is one of these guys who doesn't look sexy on the outside, but he still throws for 4,000 yards a season, which he has done pretty much his past three years. He throws for about 30 touchdowns and less than you know 15 interceptions. He's usually at like a two to one touchdown to interception ratio. Currently, I know that his contract is about to expire as well, but he's making roughly about $9 million less than Russell Wilson as well. Does he want to go into that division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert? I don't know. Would the Seahawks be getting Derek Carr in this deal? Because if they were, then this would sort of make sense because it would sort of be, I want to say, not a fair swap. But Derek Carr can put up very good and very serviceable numbers for the Seahawks. So now if they decided that they were going to give up Derek Carr and a one to get Russell Wilson, most people would be screaming, give it up to get Russell Wilson. Especially if you're a Raiders fan. If you're a Seahawks fan, you want to slap the shit out of someone who even makes that suggestion. I don't think that he gets traded because it's probably going to cost way too much money as a cap hit. I believe when I looked the last time, Russell Wilson's dead cap hit is close to like $53 million. We thought it was a big deal when Carson Wentz got traded at 33.8. And then when Sean Watson wants to get traded and he's in the high 40 dead cap hit, this deal makes sense, not this season, but next season. Because after this season, Russell Wilson can opt out of his contract and then go wherever he wants to go. So ultimately, I believe all of this is just smoke and mirrors. Russell Wilson doesn't go anywhere, especially to another team in the NFC. So the most likely team of those four who would actually be able to land him would be the Las Vegas Raiders. That's just my opinion. That's my take. I say that he might be on another team, not next season, but the following season because he can opt out and leave and his cap hit won't be nearly as bad. Let me know what you guys think of this take in the comments below. Do you think that Russell Wilson stays in Seattle? 
Do you think that they just say the hell with it and trade them away? Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at Raw Sports Talk. Follow me on Twitter at Raw Sports Talk 1. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. I'm out. Ooh, baby, I like it, bro. Yeah, baby, I like it, bro.